Hello, everybody, and uh, okay. And uh, before the slide shows, and uh, I uh, can say a few words about myself and and the company. And it's my first time to openly talk about my company. Uh, I've given a lot of talks uh, in the academic settings, but it, this is really the first time that I uh, present the company in such an open, uh, first time present the company in such an open, you know, big event. Really appreciate research progress, uh, uh, appreciate my uh, university support. So maybe we can start the presentation. Okay, so in the next 15 minutes, I'm gonna introduce you uh, Aspiring Universe. Uh, it's a new, a new startup, very young, but with a big vision. And so uh, we can go to the next slide. So the Aspiring Universe really has the biggest vision, which is we really wanna get the 360 degree in-depth intelligence for every farmland worldwide. And then this is a bold, very bold and ambitious goal. And so to say a few words about ourselves, we are very proud to be a spin-off of multiple world-class research labs from the University of Illinois. I and my co-founders, including Gary Schnicki from Ag Economics, and then Jim Penn from Computer Science, who is a machine learning expert. So we actually bring, uh, uh, bring together a team that with different aspects of the, of the domain expertise, combined artificial intelligence, combined with the high-performance computing together. And so to really bring up the best of technology and science to the agriculture industry. And the second part, you know, our unique strengths with a global vision. What this means, essentially, it, this is, we feel that we are very different from all the rest of the companies that they are doing remote sensing or specifically doing modeling, because we are the company that really integrate these two together and then really provide instead of data. I don't provide only data. Data is only one part. We provide intelligence, we provide insights at the field scale, scalable to cover everywhere in the world. And you will see how some, some of the ideas here. And so our service is really B2B, and this has some um, reasons. And, and first of all, I believe that as a researcher, as a professor, I'm in a land-grant university. I, my motivation is to help farmers. And then so if, if this is actually the case that inside the university, my work is to provide tools that help farmers for free. And then this has come from my own motivation and the inspiration that I really want to make a big difference in the real world. And so helping farmers inside the university setting, great. But then some of the technology actually reached to the maturity. Uh, and then they, uh, if I want these technology to continue to have a real world impact, the natural step is to have a company, make a company, and then let the company to really generate the real world impact. And that's actually what we do, and that's why I'm here. And so a few things that we really target at, agricultural intelligence, we have unprecedented technology to do remote sensing. You're gonna see a demo of that. We focus a lot on the agricultural production, but we also focus a lot on the environmental conditions that you will see. And then index insurance design, for those who do not understand what is index, index insurance, essentially this is the, one form of the insurance that can cover uh, at the broader regions, especially used widely in the, U, in the world outside of US. And as you may know that US have a very mature crop insurance uh, system. It's a 10 billion market, but government basically pay the bill, taxpayer pay the bill mostly. And so this market is very mature already. However, there is about the, Outside of US, there's another 20 billion market of the underserved crop insurance market worldwide, in Brazil, in China, in Africa, in other countries, even you can think, you know, only 20% of the farmers in France actually being protected by crop insurance. And these are the biggest markets that I really interested and, and motivated to explore and, and provide a solution. And we believe we have a solution to provide. And then third is really about sustainability, about the ecosystem service. And then we know that the production is not only enough, we care about sustainability, we care about the future of our planet. And, and so we actually believe that we have the technology that really can serve for the broader kind of assessment of sustainability ecosystem quantification from the field scale, but to the continental scale, and, and then even worldwide. And that's sort of our motivation. And so I'm gonna give you a, a brief uh, kind of a visualization about Nebraska. This is Nebraska. This is actually from our fusion satellite data technology. What I'm gonna click is you will see that from every day, starting from the growing season, you will see everyday progress. What you see from this image in you know, one county seaward county from Nebraska that the color bar 
refers to the blue refers to bare ground, and then the, the 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 red color refers to a lot of production, a lot of photosynthesis. And then you can zoom into two fields that you can clearly see the pattern. And then we can do that again. And and so uh, if you see that again, some fields actually are already green during the springtime, and those are either winter wheat or cover crop. You actually can detect that. When you have bare ground, you actually can also have a signal. And these signals can give you how much the residual put on the ground. So you actually can use that in for the tillage practice. And the furthermore, down to go, go down to the growing season, you actually can see that when crop is planted, when it's emerging, and then when they reach to the flower time, and then they, when they get harvested. And so all these insights actually now can be detected from satellite, and uh, I understand that people may concern about, about, about that, but that's the state of our technology, and I think these, if put in the you know, right people's hands, can be really, really useful to help uh, optimize our production and provide the insights. And then the second that I will you know, briefly talk about is other information that we provide, you, know, you see a glimpse of the satellite data, and I add one more thing, you know, satellite, we believe we are substitute our planning lab because we actually don't, you don't need to buy the data. We actually just need to use the public data set, but use our secret source of our algorithm to come up with continuous time series, cloud free, gap free. But even further, we can actually go back to 2000 and we are starting whether we can even go further back to generate, starting from 2000 to generate daily gap free, cloud free, uh, continuous time series image. Uh, from anywhere in the planet. And then so some other, some other data set that we can actually have that we have the ability to generate is integrating the satellite data with AI, with deep domain knowledge. We actually can get to the farming practice. Monitoring, we can really look at any individual field's historical information and then look at the environmental footprint tracking. And then so this is a you know, very interesting, uh, this is a very interesting graph. We did it for every field in the US for 2019, and this is our result that we, you know, we just compare, this is our field level crop yield, ubiquitous everywhere, we cover the 95% of all the areas that grow corn in the US. And then, so you do see, actually, if you compare uh, in our analysis, we can actually see which field is actually really affected by the inundation from the last previous flooding. And then, so these give you, you know, the left side is will currently U.S. grow corn, and right side tells you some ideas about our current accuracy of the performance. Green <coughs> refers to the very high accuracy, low error, and the red refers to a little bit more error. So in the core part of the corn build, our algorithm has a high performance, highly, highly, confident, highly accurate at the field scale. And then, even furthermore, you know, I, I already told the story that I really care about areas beyond the US, especially in Brazil. And actually we applied the same algorithm using transfer learning, and then we apply it to the Brazil, and then the work, the algorithm actually works very nicely. So we tested in the Brazil, worked very nicely, and then we also have some other works that in Benin to a different type of crop rice. And then so uh, this is also, this is really motiva motivating us to address the international market. And so when we go to the international market, the Index insurance essentially is to come up with a way to, uh, based on the satellite, based on the weather information, to model the yield indicator. Yield indicator at very fine granular scale, but also go back to the history. And so we believe our way of doing the index insurance really have a better performance compared with the traditional just one satellite indicator or soil moisture indicator. And then we also believe we have this historical perspective. We can go back to 20 years that really provide an unprecedented historical perspective that's really needed by the risk uh, assessment. And then last but not least, we have our global vision. Our algorithm is, uh, is you know, strong enough that we can transfer, uh, adaptive enough we can transfer to other regions uh, with a high confidence. So, so far we have tried Brazil, we have tried Argentina and the Ukraine with some partnerships and it turns out that our algorithm really works. So we do have a lot of confidence about that. Last but not least, this is the topic that I wanna cover regarding sustainability, and then the way that we thinking about sustainability is really try to see that, is there a way that we can really assess? Because a lot of the sustainability questions involves to ask, what if? You know, what if you start to do tillage? What, uh, no till. What if you start to do cover crop? What if you start to do split nitrogen application? What if climate change uh, in this way? And so a lot of what if questions and then the tools that we come up with is really to use a lot of the satellite observations, 
and use satellite observation to constrain the model that we have. So, you know, this is a crop growth condition. You know, it's a lot of models actually can handle that. But what's missing in most of the current approach is you just run the model without any constraint. And then we already mentioned to you that there are so much data set from, av available from the satellite uh, and from other places. You can actually take these data set and use that to constrain at the field scale using the you know, advanced mathematical tools. And then you can scale that up in the commercial cloud computing systems um, in AWS or Google Cloud, such that you can be uh, doing this for every individual field. And then you start to really constrain your model to make your model much, much more accurate. And this is what we actually do. And then so with some of the information that we can map out regarding you know, different management practice that we see and put into the model to understand what's really going on. And so there are two videos that I want to show. Eugene, could you click that and make, make sure that we have the video showing? And so on the left side and right side, they are showing the same thing. The, they are the photosynthesis rate. And, and then for those who do not exactly know what is photosynthesis, these are actually how much carbon has been taken by the plants from the atmosphere. And so this is the major component of carbon goes into the land. And then if you want to really assess the carbon budget, uh, and then you actually need to quantify how much carbon leave the land, and then in the form of respiration, in the form of greenhouse gas emission, as well as how much carbon has been really uh, stored on the land, they stay. They stay. And uh, actually these aspects, we can actually nowadays address all of that at the global scale. You know, in this case, it's the US case that we can see the dynamics of the daily photosynthesis rate. And we also come up with the way to actually uh, estimate the respiration, the greenhouse gas emissions, such that we can approximate how much carbon has been uh, put on the ground. Is that very challenging to do? So it's, it's running. And so what you are seeing here, it's the everyday progress. So you see the date. And then you see the color up. The light color refers to you have photosynthesis rate. And then you know, as you get into the growing season, you really focus on the corn bale part. You will see that the corn bale part really blowing up because these are the regions that hungrily taking photosynthesis and the grow crops. And so you will see the corn bale very clearly. And then you see all these daily dynamics because if you have a cloud passing by, you suppress your radiation. And because we calculate our radiation explicitly, so the impact of that, how they propagate into the crop can be actually seen. And then, so these are the different major business entities we really focusing on. And the co-founders, we have Sibo and the Yujie, uh, the, 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 the C-level uh, company uh, uh, people here too. And then we have a few uh, world-class advisors that are really helping us, uh, really appreciate their support. And then, so this is a aspiring universe and thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, let me know. If you have opportunity, I really want to get connected and, and see how Spring Universe can really help improve your business success. Thank you very much. Thanks for the talk. Thanks a lot for the talk. Can you say a little bit more about how the carbon uptake estimation works? Like what are the features in the model? What is the ground truth for that type of stuff? Do you mind to tell me where you're from? Oh, sorry. My name is Spencer Schaber. I'm a data scientist at Cargill. Cargill. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, uh, there's there's essentially you know if, if you talk about soil soil carbon if you talk about the whole carbon thing you know the 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 most uh, accurate way to check to track carbon is uh, you digging a lot of holes in the soil right so you you do soil cores and then you can do that but that's very expensive and it's not scalable so the, our approach is that. Uh, we're not saying you shouldn't do that, but we do that very strategically. At the same time, we have a way to proxy that, so-called proxy. And then that's, the, that's using the whole mass balance of the carbon. So essentially, the delta of the carbon that has been left on the ground equals how much carbon coming, you know, minus how much carbon leaving the system. So it's a mass balance, very simple, right? So then it, it's the problem that, could you, could, could you quantify how much carbon coming and how much carbon goes out? And then, then, then you can get that delta. And then our lab is really focused on quantifying both terms, both sides. So for the com carbon coming, it's primarily through photosynthesis. Usually a kind of animation, we can do that anywhere ubiquitously. For the 
carbon goes out, that's more complicated because that's associated with the autotrophic respiration from plant, phytotrophic respiration from soil. Some of the carbon has been harvested out of the field. And so we actually build a complete way to quantify all these different components with a high fidelity. And then if you combine all of that together, you can complete the whole equation of the mass balance. And then you can verify that in the real ground with the soil core. And then you basically can complete the loop of doing carbon uh, quantification at the individual field. Oh, so hopefully that, that's, that, that's making sense. Thank you very much.